Yes, you do have to fight it, and that's exactly why we're here live at UCY.TV. Welcome, everybody, to the Voice of Humanity. I am the master of many things, and my guest tonight is going to lay down information um, seemingly that people have died for. And if people don't receive this information, many more will die. I'm talking about the New Madrid Zone. Uh, that's not new to most of us truth seekers, uh, but as far as the details of how and why before, uh, the last time it happened, and what is to come, um, I'm going to just introduce my guest. His bio in his own words, uh, Thomas Ford, I am aware of hidden forces working to control and manipulate every mind with false reality. I am working only to expose evil and help make this world a better place. I have studied hidden technology and covert wars for many years exposing global elites hand and causing planned ritual killings of millions of innocent victims this is the reason i am doing all this i began working alongside dutch sense uh, many of you know dutch sense i'm sure and the weather geo reporters on youtube in april of two thousand and eleven there are several brave vi individuals and groups that i have been had the pleasure of working with in these past few years the 9-11 false flag woke me up fully to this nightmare, and it was solidified through spiritual visions. Calling me where the voices of victims pleading from the angry deep begging for investigation of 9-11, I became involved in independent investigations and participating to reveal and spread total, complete truth, truth and justice for all. Um, my guest, again, Thomas Ford, welcome to the show, sir. It's an honor. It's my honor. Thank you, Kevin. And <clears throat> thank you to station host uh, Joyce is that her name uh, Jules yes a bit, bit whole lot of love to Jules and Paul they just work endlessly to keep this network going and it's just such a pleasure to be a host here um, a drama free network you don't you don't Thomas uh, I know this is your first trip over here hopefully uh, well we are going to see you back because folks this is probably going to be an, Im an immense amount of information and we were already thinking that there will be part two uh, first thing, real quick, Thomas, before we get going. Secondly, for any of you that are listening to this on the archive or those in the chat room, you know that I don't normally upload to YouTube any more of the shows because of Jules hard work and having the archive. But this information must get to as many people as possible. So find this on YouTube once it's up later tonight or in the morning and remix it, share it to yours in part two as well. Uh, but enough about that. Thomas, you've got some heavy information. And I want to say, folks, uh, this guy really impresses me because uh, something we didn't tell you about his bio, uh, and that's because it's not the focus. But uh, he put it out there as fact, and it is. He is going to be running for governor of Kansas 
in 2014. But don't be alarmed. This is not a political show. Uh, when there is time for calls, I'm sure Thomas would answer questions relative to that. But he's here uh, because of the information he has uh, and his belief of what he must do with that. So, Thomas, I'm going to open it up to you uh, as to where you want to start out as far as, you know, bringing people up to date on who you are. You mentioned 9-11, um, you know, and I think that was a big wake-up for many truthers. But uh, uh, the floor is yours, sir, and I'm just going to try to fill in the voids and uh, keep quiet. <laughs> You're fine. I want to first say my condolences to anyone that had any problems from the meteor that fell, that fell over Russia in February of <clears throat> 2012 and my heart goes out to anybody that's lost their lives to get the information out to the people this show is dedicated to Tony Hood who uncovered the truth of the 1811 1812 12, uh, the New Madrid earthquakes were caused by a meteor strike in the region of northern Mississippi it flattened a mountain and the shockwave patterns are clearly visible and his website has dedicated many photographs of the rocks that he has found from the site, some of which look like human bones and the strangest anomalies I've ever seen in rock formations. He has dedicated himself to <clears throat> the truth, and this is about re-educating or making history correct by putting the, the actual truth of the event out there so it's common knowledge for all. That is important so we can understand our present time and what to face, what we are to face in the future. So again, Tony Hood, thank you very much, my friend. His website, uh, Caleb Penn's Legacy. I'll be linking many things. Uh, just a few minutes before I came on, I had a major computer glitch, and I'm lucky to be here on Skype and online. I'll do my best to provide as many links as I can. I had spent several days preparing, had lost much sleep. Uh, really run myself ragged I'm I'm just gonna bring it so let's go ahead and start the show off this is not doom and gloom this is woman bloom we're in springtime life is celebration and we can't let any evil rain on our parades so we're gonna be with the light and destroy the darkness I uh, I just want to say that the only person that truly knows the future is God and I just have to read this quote that I found on the internet it says in the scriptures God tells us that one of the things that makes him distinct from all of the false gods out there is the fact that he tells us the future in advance. God has done this in a wide variety of ways, but one of my favorites is through the amazing prophetic holidays he has given, he has given to us. For example, the vast majority of Christians, the vast majority of Jews, and the vast majority of the rest of the world has totally missed the prophetic implications of Passover. Now this is synchronistic. Passover and the meteors I'll, I'll just, during the original Passover, right before the people of Israel left Egypt, God instructed the people of Israel to kill a lamb and to put the blood of that lamb on the doorstep so that, death, so that the death angel would pass over their homes. Why the doorposts? Well, even today, most doorposts are made of wood. And where does wood come from? It comes from a tree. So the message of the original Passover was that the blood of the lamb on the tree delivered them from the wrath of God. After the, people, after the people of Israel got the, to the promised land, God required that his people gather at Jerusalem on one specific day every single year in order to celebrate the Passover. Looking back, we can see now that God had his people gather together every single year in the exact same city where Jesus would die on the exact same day. He had them act out rituals which precisely foreshadowed, foreshadowed the, shred, the shedding of the blood of the lamb on the tree of the cross. Even though it was done every single year for a thousand years in advance, most people still missed it. One of the words that used to identify holidays such as Passover in the scriptures can be translated as, quote, dress rehearsal. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> All right. The truth is that the holidays that God has given us are meant to to have us remember things in the past, but they are also prophetic dress rehearsals for things that will happen in the future. So this is relevant to the meteor events that we've been seeing in the past few years. I have 
made contacts all over the world and have been working with geo uh, geological experts, geohazards experts, geologists, um, former NSA analysts, uh, Mr. Jim Stone, uh, BK Lim that covers the uh, Gulf of Demex the Gulf of Mexico planned mega disasters, and I, the big picture is all of these things are interconnected, and the big picture we we must see what's going on, what has happened, so we can prepare for what's to come. Because I'm not saying the sky is falling. That's that's the the last thing you'll hear from me. I would much rather formulate ways to identify another celestial body coming into Earth and warning folks in harm's way before it hits. I can't trust in any governments to give us any fair warning when NASA says inbound object, best thing you can do is pray. Yeah, we can't. Uh, we, we saw Fukushima uh, really woke us up to, uh, you know, that is killing people daily and everything is fine as far as the government's concerned. And so, yeah, no, without a doubt, we're not going to get information until we see it ourselves, you know. Um, absolutely. And, and I think there's been enough uh, released by the alternative media to know there has been a lot of activity in the last few years around the new Madrid zone. So they know something, um, but they haven't told us. So it, I'm really happy that you brought this subject up because, Thomas, you know exactly what you said. You, you can't go at this in fear. Um, I've just seen so many people living in fear because of just the word New Madrid Zone. Um, but there is a real danger there, too. Uh, and, and so, anyway, back to you. But I, I just wanted to comment a little bit on that. And, uh, you know, hopefully people will achieve some type of uh, level of preparedness and, you know, inner security for their minds during, during this uh, coming times. Absolutely, Kevin. Well said. It, it appears that meteor strikes are on our lobbyist minds. Special interests have prodded the U.S. government to fund tracking of killer space rocks. I doubt that these lobbyists want to save the world from killer space rocks, but rather profit from disaster capitalism, which is what planned mega disasters are. It doesn't matter if it's natural or if it was contrived via hidden manip manipulated forces. It could be a combination of either. With the new Madrid, <clears throat> if it was struck by a meteor, which is what all the evidence is leading to, we'll get into that further. If another celestial body falls and hits the planet anywhere, it could be in Asia, it could be in New York State. If it's large enough, the impact is not just localized. The Earth is like uh, a big bell. And there's ELF waves, extremely low frequency waves. There are precursor waves that uh, usually come prior to earthquakes and scene waves. There were no precursor waves prior to the New Madrid quake. So if we get struck anywhere and it's large enough, there's going to be devastation all over the planet. 1811, 1812 was a global catastrophe. It caused a mini ice age. All natural life, the natives from the Indian tribes to all nature, especially in the region, went berserk. Everything was in distress, literal distress. And it's documented. And everyone know this, the New Madrid quake was not one quake. It was a series of quakes that stretched for several months. And the quake that had the Mississippi run backwards was in, I believe, February of 2018-12. So it wasn't the first quake that caused the, the Mississippi to run backwards. And just looking at pictures of the New Madrid fault zone, and with the links I'll provide, it is apparently clear that something had to have slammed in to that region to cause those types of earth changes. In the region that Tony Hood had alerted me to, there are no tree growth over 200 years old. There is plenty of petrified wood and strange anomalies from all of the rocks that have, that have been unearthed. There's just no other explanation. And he's even had experts from multiple fields, such as... Looks like uh, the USGS came out and... Also, 
He had his report on Fox 13 News there in Tennessee with Mike Dees. And he went and took all his information to the University of Mississippi. And strange enough, that's where he ran into his largest... Ad uh, they caused him more strife and dissolution. Apparently, people do not want this information getting out. And it, it all it leads to the native... All history, from our history and even the natives, everything has been destroyed. It, it all pre precursed it, the trail of tears that led to the to the west that not only did it kill many many tribes it killed the truth as well or at least it stifled it tremendously and here on my computer I should have multiple tabs open so I can give eyewitness testimony to the lights in the skies the strange noises the strange streaks the sulfur smells and oh it's just there's so much to cover uh, it's it's really uh, overwhelming, so I, I'm trying to stay focused and deal with this uh, computer that's just kind of limping along here. So well, I'm going to start pumping out some links. I want everybody to see what uh, Mr. Tony Hood has put together. He's got a YouTube video and uh, a few websites, and he's got strong backing in the scientific community. He's planning on having legitimate testing done with LIDAR on these rocks to to show, without a doubt, what caused these uh, strange occurrences? Uh, and, and Thomas, if if I could quickly, just for the people that are listening to this on the archive, the links that Thomas puts in the chat room, I will be gathering and putting in the show more below the YouTube archive. So if you're subscribed to my UCY feed, go over to YouTube if you want to pick up the links. So we want to make sure you guys have this information. Uh, and have time to disseminate it over a few days because I don't think you're going to get the big picture uh, in this first hour. But uh, back to you, Thomas. Okay, very cool. I let me take a look here. The the New Madrid quake not only caused the earthquake here in the states, but the Caracas earthquake in Venezuela of 1812. Now, when the Earth gets struck or has an earthquake, there are other release points where the pressure travels to and is released through. So when we had the big quake in Japan on 311, and we had the large quake in Sumatra, December 25th, 26, 2004, if you think of the Earth as a large bell, and when it's struck, those vibrations travel all throughout the planet, all throughout everything on it, it reverberates out. So there are other points where these, think of them as birth pains, labor pains. The Earth is moaning and creaking, and that energy has to be released somewhere. And I've got some documents that show crustal displacement theory, which is wonderful. It, uh, all of our science and, and most of our history and teachings, anything that's not plate tectonics is shunned upon. And Einstein approved of this uh, Hapgood's theory about plate uh, crustal development. And I've also come across information regarding the Carolina Bays. There's evidence all over the planet of meteor strikes causing these formations, even in Kenya, in Africa. Uh, I'll, I'll have to find the links, but there's overwhelming evidence that this is just bigger than one could ever imagine. It's, it's unfathomable, and everything is connected to it, and we must understand what really happened. It must be common knowledge, so we can take care of ourselves. There, there's there has to be technology and ways to detect and warn people because there were groups that warned us and made earthquake warning systems that the governments refused to purchase because it would prove their guilt in these planned mega disasters. So I want to say thank you Charlie Plyer and the Elfrad group and Dave and everybody that's been killed, chased out of the country or barely alive. I just want to thank you and you mentioned yourself, Thomas, that you've had um, archives removed on other sites and uh, uh, on your own computer information uh, missing in relation to all this recently. Yes, I've got some documents I want very I, I want to disclose, but I'm afraid I don't have them at this moment. I lost about 2,000 documents uh, in the past week. Uh, just being in contact with certain folks and interacting and downloading and extracting all this information. 
Um, um, if if those are still somehow available, if you retrieve those, uh, and again, as we spoke last night, um, I would be glad to put those up on my site. Uh, I'm the only one that has access, and again, if uh, they're sensitive, they would have to uh, seize my website before I would take them down. Because, uh, uh, you know, um, but anyway, uh, so we'll provide uh, as many links as you do have, though, in, into the chat room. Are you in the chat room now, Thomas? No, but I'll I'll make my way there. I've got too I've got too much going on, and I I'm heading there right as we speak, so I can start doing some link bombing okay well if it's a burden you can pass because you're on Skype anyway you can pass the link to me and I can put it into um, the chat room if it's gonna burden your computer by having the extra page open alright it's it's really no bother the com it's just acting so screwy right now I'm lucky to be online well that's that's normal and folks if something does happen because things do happen when we touch these sensitive issues um, just stay, you know, if Skype goes down or something, if Thomas disconnects from us, we have a plan B, uh, and we'll announce what that's going to be if we need to. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we're going to plug away here. Sounds wonderful. Uh, do you have any questions or, uh, any direction you'd like to see this go? Well, so I just wanted to comment a little bit. I mean, we saw, I think it was, what, uh, about two years ago with these drills uh, on the New Madrid and the, uh, the orders that the government put in for underwater body bags. You, you don't need those on dry land. Uh, well, or do you? Um, so people really have to listen. I hope people are really listening up to what you got to say. And if they get into the chat room late, they go back and they don't miss a word of it, uh, you know, because... I agree. I've been expecting the new matter. Matter of fact, that's why I'm where I am back home in New Hampshire for a season. Because although I'm not going to live like the world is ending tomorrow, I do want to be in a safe zone. And it was either here or up in the upper northwest as I saw it. And uh, obviously Fukushima's over there, so <laughs> that's why uh, I've been. I, I moved back here for a year or two and see what these earth changes do. Because we're in for something. You know, all the the factors, the, the solar cycles, uh, you know, the changes that we see, uh, if we're watching it, and we should be, you know, something is going to happen, and I think it's going to be more than one thing when it does start, you know? Um, yes, I, I had a whistleblower in 2009 disclose some information to me, some personal information that I will never share with another soul, but the main thing that he was disclosing was the complexity of these events, what he referred to as the ABC, Atomic, Biological, and Cyber, a multi-pronged attack. And when you think of these pl planned mega disasters, think of the Rube Goldberg machines, you know, the very complex machines where you, every, you know, things have to fall into place and the, the, the ball bearing has to fall out of the cup, you know, it's just that big long series of little events that lead up to the big finale. That's kind of what we're looking at here. It's it's spaced out. They're they're very good chess players, and where I think we're nobody knows when the end game is when checkmate will come. They've spent I don't know countless dollars building underground facilities. Will we be included? Will all be included? Will we have to be lucky and be standing at an entrance when the scout when when things go down? If things do get bad, because truth honestly. It's going to be earth-shaking, and nobody is going to be able to get away from it if it's an event like this. The Hopi tribe, many Indian tribes have prophecy and, and are talking about something falling and striking the planet and things changing. It's, it's, com it's coming from too many different sources. We can all feel it in our guts. We just need to be aware of our surroundings, take thanks for every moment in day, and start preparing. And if I can come across individuals that can develop technology to do the job for NASA and other entities that refuse to report on these, these events, we'll do it ourselves. All it's about is saving lives. That's what ELFRAD was about when they started the earthquake warning system. And that's all of these things, even with uh, Caleb Penn's theory, what Tony... Tony Hood down there in Tennessee is working on it. It's, it's the same thing. People don't want this information getting out, and if you step on the wrong toes, 
bad things happen and that's the last thing I want so this stuff needs to be known by everybody and if we can all collectively unite the power of peace and love is pretty I don't think anything can destroy it and this is all about altering the course what like you, you mentioned Edgar Casey last night in our talk many things he predicted have come to pass a lot of things did not happen so I think since the future is yet to come and the fear of the unknown is holding a lot of people in check it's time to break those break these bonds and these chains before we all end up in in the bondage of the global elitists that want to control everything well absolutely i mean the the two major things that people act out of are fear and greed in my opinion and that's why we have the laws we have they either accept them because they're in fear or they vote them in because whatever the law is caters to their own needs you know um, so yeah, you're absolutely right. I, we, we've got to kind of knock that nonsense off, and you know, um, you know, and I don't put any definition on religion, but they don't have that uh, fear factor over me because I know that you know I'm to continue on, and there's this big wide universe, and, and so if someone were to kill me, I win. You know, I'm out there. I'm I'm gone, man. So I don't have that. It, it doesn't. You know, um, and so I'll kind of push the limits, and I'm glad that you're bringing this information forward, uh, Thomas, uh, because it does need to be addressed. I had a question. Uh, yeah, I know what it was. Do you it, this uh, celestial stuff and the asteroid stuff that we're seeing? Do you, have you seen any scientific link between that and uh, you know the quote unquote planet X Nibiru type thing? Uh, is there any connection there, or, or, or do you have other science that says, you know, Nibiru is unrelated, something else? And Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm looking through all of my notes here, and it looked like the comet that passed in 1811 that was titled... Let me find it here. Well, it's talking about a near-Earth object, or the NEO, and New Magic Seismic Zone... Um, may it not have had run-of-the-mill seismic activity so we're looking for uh, comets in the tail so it wasn't the actual great comet that was seen it was smaller bodies within the tail that got pulled in and a fellow researcher had sent me some information earlier today informing me of what his theory was about the uh, meteor that was seen in Russia and all there was quite a few sightings uh, this this past uh, few months Russia, Florida, Cuba, uh, a handful of places around the earth saw these burning fireballs. And what what I was disclosed was this uh did we pass through a meteor cloud? That could be the uh, the connection there. And with uh, what I was referring to my opening statement with uh the future and knowing what's to come in dress rehearsals, it's kind of like the precursor to the big show. I'm not saying I don't have the pr I can't say this is hyper technology that these celestial bodies if if they had the technology like imagine a tractor beam picking a rock and flinging it down and just having some tests I I recall the uh, uh the meteor that came into California about the size of a minivan all of these things that fall have powerful powerful energy to them and they have shock waves and thermonuclear They've been detected on the infrasound, uh, which is used by the nuclear proliferation treaties to measure nuclear bomb tests and other things. So these sensors around the world have picked up on the infrasound this shock wave. When that meteor struck and exploded over the upper troposphere, that's what caused the glass to break. And that's why our weather was so strange. That's why it was so cold up until a few weeks ago everywhere it affects everything and if a natural event can do that much and if nefarious forces have technology that we don't we're not supposed to know about it just makes their job a whole heck of a lot easier to control the markets to bring droughts and floods wherever you wish so now when you say uh... technologies are you referring to harp or, or harp other one, things yeah, just one yes that's just one aspect it's I like to call it the unholy triad. We have what are known as Tesla Tech Arrays. That's a coin phrase by Rev. Michelle Hopkins. There are structures, large structures, underneath the oceans, 
strategically placed all around the globe, along with other strange cables, and it's all interconnected. We're right in the middle of it. We have chemtrails and nanoparticulates above our head being sprayed every day that's accumulating into our water and everything that grows and has cells. And then up above that, we have the geostationary, we have the Star Wars satellites. And it's all connected to massive Cray supercomputer systems and other computer systems that more than likely this is being controlled by a sentient being. AI, more than likely, and the, the, pieces are, the pieces of the puzzle are being connected. It's just a matter of time. No human should have this much power. And our, the father of our modern-day computer, Dr. Alan Turing, one of the last things he was working on before he was conveniently suicided was machines having consciousness. Wow, that that's yeah, and we see all this uh, robotic stuff they're out with, you know, and and printing in 3D uh, to to make organs and just a lot of sick stuff that I don't think humans should have any hand in, um, none at all. We're we're, we're messing with stuff that uh, is going to bring some heavy consequences. Uh, you know, um, and, and I'm kind of wondering, you know, I watch kind of what's going on with the sun, and that's real active. Uh, just the other day, what, an X3 and same day, and I don't know if it was time relative, so I don't want to say that it was, but the same day we had a 7-0 earthquake uh, somewhere in the Philippines. Um, and so as these, the solar flares are increasing and stuff, I'm expecting some major catastrophes in space with, uh, you know, satellites, uh, anything that we've put up there. I don't think that anybody can fathom what the sun is going to do to any man-made anything if it so chooses, you know. Um, and maybe you could fill in. I mean, that's kind of a rough idea of what I, what I see coming, but maybe you could fill in on that a little bit, Thomas. I think Thomas is muted. <laughs> Happens to me all the There you go. Here I am. There you are. Yes. Oh, it, it's so awful to fathom seeing the Great Lakes connecting with the Gulf of Mexico. And there's been a media blackout in the Gulf ever since the planned mega disaster, however it was done, that took out the rig rigs and the illegal wells that were illegally drilled and nuked. And there's... We've got a synthetic bioorganism that BP has created called Cynthia. Yeah, I'm and seeing headlines. A lot of sickness uh, in the Gulf. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that BP oil uh, well was drilled right at the edge of a salt dome. Um, and, and that is uh, basically at the end of this New Madrid seismic zone as well. So when that happened, I automatically started thinking that's the trigger point. Um, and since then, I mean, we have the Louisiana sinkhole. That thing's still growing and going nuts. There was a sinkhole in Ohio. So we've got that line kind of dotted now in the New Madrid, you know. Um, I, ha I have to think that, yeah, something is going to happen. Um, you know, and they know it is. They, they're preparing for this. So how come they're not telling us? That's their standard operating procedure. Well, I know, so and they, they justify it because, oh, people will be too scared and they will freak out and they'll be looting. and they'll, you, you can't lie based on ifs and maybes. That's my point of view. If, if people freak out and if people loot, we have to deal with that at that point, but you cannot lie to people. Uh, I don't care what the, what the issue is. I don't care how many people are going to die. They're going to die anyway. You cannot justify it, but right they do and we pay for that they do the most honest the most intimate you can be with any other entity is honesty that's as close as you can be with another individual and that's all I am I live to give and I'm an honest soul so I'm here to to just spread the truth and if I'm wrong I'll correct myself I'm a human I make errors just like we all do it's the mindset of these global elitists who believe they're entitled to do all this and make the decisions to play God, to hoard entire continents and all the resources and all the money and all of their technologies that benefit them, and we get the short end of the stick.
It has to end. We are the patriotic elite, a phrase coined by Nevada Governor David Lori Vanderbeek. We exclude no one. So all are welcome. Love all people. This is nothing but love and light. And the world is shrouded by darkness. And we must be like a spark, a light. Let's destroy the darkness, as Jim Stone beautifully coined. We're all in this world together, and we've come too far to give up now. I, I won't point the finger at any specific group whatsoever. You can look at Obama and Bush, any leader. We have to learn to forgive these people because when we do, the negativity releases from us. And hopefully they'll learn through their course of action, they'll make the right decisions and hopefully just go away. These people are weak. That's why they hide behind NATO, Blackwater, all these armies in perpetual wars. They have to be weak. We outnumber them so much. And they've created our realities. And this is all about manifesting our own realities and focusing our intent and creating the future the way we see it fit. And I see a future without them controlling us all, where we can make the spiritual jump and be a type one civilization. We could have ended global hunger, but with our multi-trillion billion dollar budgets for all these wars that are endless, that's not going to happen until enough people get upset. W what we're going to do is just start uniting inside of ourselves. Just love ourselves, be honest with ourselves, S just observe and create, see the world around you, L live in the moment, hope for the best and prepare the worst. Prepare for the worst. We, we have the potential. Everything's going to be fine. We really don't have anything to worry about. It's true. The only fear we have to fear is fear itself. And that fear is created by these problem reaction solution cretins that create the problems and then usher the public to run to them for the solution. It has to end. The cycle must be broken. Yeah, I, I wish I, you know, were as positive as you. I just see a mess because people are so divided. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to, there are going to be groups of us that have that thinking, you know, and will be sharing and caring. Uh, but I just see a lot of people, and until they reach that point, they they don't have a hope because they're going to have to survive through some serious stuff, you know. Um, and it's going to take uh, communities, uh, tribes, whatever you want to call it, banding together and, and dropping the bullshit, you know. Uh, color, uh, all this stuff needs to go away because uh, if not, you're going to go away. That's how I see it. Now, Thomas, you mentioned working with Dutch Sense, and I used to uh, watch a lot of his stuff a few years ago, you know, when I was first starting to wake up, um, you know, and I liked uh, the fact that he was covering the weather and in, in the earthquakes and all that stuff. And then, uh, you know, when Fukushima bl blew up, he was out and about, but I haven't seen much of what he's doing lately in the last year or two. Um, but I know the last I saw, he was doing a lot to kind of, uncover these anomalies uh, in the radar patterns and stuff and relate ta that to HARP. And, you know, back then, again, this was over a year or so ago, it seemed like uh, I was on the fence of whether this is really going on or if this is just an anomaly because there's an anomaly or um, where where does that kind of stuff stand or, or where are you along those lines of being able to know when they're using this god-awful machine? That's a wonderful question. Uh, you know, it's funny you call it a machine. It's more like a weaponized planet. There are more receivers and pieces of towered structures, and I really would like to have... I wanted to have uh, Mr. Jim Lee, J Jim Resonated Lee, who is one of the masters of detecting and keeping an eye on what he it's his radiation database you can look anywhere on Google Earth with his plugins and see these VLF receivers the Stanford group is it's like steroids harp has taken off like um, harp is a it's a it's really got a bad name for itself you can look up in your sky and see these are subtle anomalies everything is manipulating natural forces and they've been working on it so long and people are so distracted that now they all you have to do is open your eyes and look and the the weather watchers and I we can we can see satellite we can go out and look up at the sky 
find the chemtrails, find these strange cuts. There's wave patterns, there's signatures in the air. And I'd be happy to take pictures and video when I'm able to, and many people do. So I sit behind a computer and capture radar feeds. It's called the Doppler effect, where if an anomaly occurs, another close Doppler will pick it up. So I've been documenting all these strange happenings. I've lost a few computers. I've had to terminate a few accounts. I've had, we've all had problems. Uh, I have had, I have nothing to complain about. This is an expensive hobby. <laughs> I, want to, I want to teach people how to do this. Yes, Dutch has been very adamant working with the folks down in New Orleans, Bayou Corn, the bringing attention to what's happening with the sinkhole, with the seismic activity, with the geological, geothermal, these volcanoes that are up in uh, Southern California. We're finding volcanoes in the New Madrid zone. There's volcanoes in Mississippi, and I, I don't have the names in front of me. I've got so much info. I want to have Tony Hood on if he'd be happy to, or at least record him speaking. And I would like to see a roundtable with Dutch, Jim, Tony, BK Lim, and a few other heavy hitters that have all of this information. These guys are the pros and have dedicated their lives. And honestly, some of these folks have risked everything and have lost they have lost too much. So when, when you step on enough toes and do enough saber rattling, when you see individuals get quiet, it's probably because they've reached a point where if they go any further, they don't want their family or their friends to receive any detrimental harm. It's right. mob rule. Yeah, and I think, the, like, again, and this was way back, a year and a half, maybe two ago, but Dutch was starting to see some of that stuff uh, uh, way back then. And, again, I haven't kept up with him because I really don't have time to watch videos anymore. It's, it's horrible. But... Uh, and you mentioned Jim Lee resonated uh, very, uh, you know, I've interacted with him a couple of uh, years now or close to it, and um, he has just poured a lot of effort into that website. I mean, he has grown that thing in what he has done with it over time, um, and I think I was connected to him when he first put it up, and the link is in the chat room for anybody, uh, resonated.com. Uh, Check that out, um, and, and, you know, Get him on YouTube, Twitter, wherever else he is. Uh, great guy, uh, and and works tirelessly uh, to you know do what he's doing. So that would be great. Maybe uh, you know you can reach out to these guys uh, before next week because obviously we'll have to uh, continue this. I'm sure into the part two. Um, right now we've got about uh, 15 minutes left so I'll just give you the the time warning Thomas um, so that you can lead us in the way you want it to go from here and leave off where you want to leave off uh, for next week alright perfect I've just got some notes here in front of me I want to pass a website along I can't drop any links into the chat room um, I've been cut off so sought of the times S O T T of the times dot net amazing information you won't find anywhere else jimstonefreelance dot com join up with the forum that's my freelance journalist group that I've been working with for the past year oh geez I have coordinates of where this specific meteor struck I've got them jotted down here I was gonna try to make a a link picture uh, let me let me at least link um, the website that Tony Hood put together with all of this. It's called Kayla Penn's Legacy. If you were to search Kayla Penn's Legacy, I'll I'll figure out a way to if you provide can, that. Yeah, can you pass that to me on Skype here, and I'll put it into the chat room for you. Sure, thank you. I'm I'm limping along here. Just give me a, a moment. Sure. Nothing seems to be to be working anymore. Here we go. Okay. Uh. And folks, again, if you're listening and for some reason Thomas isn't able to get all the links out, maybe after he closes down Skype in the show, he can email those. So uh, look for the YouTube video. And please, even if you heard the show, go over there and hit the remix button that will be there. Share it to your channel. Put it on your Facebook. Uh, and we will, sometime midweek, I will update everybody on... Um, you know who is going to be able to show up for the second part uh, 
but whatever links uh, Thomas can make available before the archive goes up, then I'll make sure those get to you. Okay, I got some links coming up now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we have to correct our flawed history. We have to get it right. We got to unite the country. I, I think that's really why this is so darn important. I see us uniting. I know we're going to unite. What better way to stifle our progression than to split a nation in two? To, if you bring that toxic Gulf water into the New England Sea, look at the contingency plans in Lenexa, Kansas. They have the brand new Region 7 EPA headquarters, which they no longer monitor for radiation, but they've got their headquarters right in the middle of the nation, just to the east of this projected Inland Sea. We also have the Plum Island Bioweapons Lab that's going to be moving to Manhattan, which cannot happen. The Keystone Pipeline and NAFTA Superhighway, everything is being routed to the west. And you talked about contingency plans. New Louisiana is not in these contingency plans. They know that state's going. Many people have known for many years. Anybody with common sense or any geological history or know the the, the region, it's, a, it's falling into the water. And with that salt dome, you, you know oil being released continuously since the since event, April 20th, 2010. All that water is rushing in. All the salt is melting. The anomalies are occurring. And I, I must say, in, upper can, in, the up, in the upper peninsula, northern Michigan, in Canada, earthquakes these last few years, splitting the, splitting the ground open, huge cracks. I'll provide the link. So you've got, we've got physical evidence of earth changes and strange, strange anomalies. And we're right smack dab in the middle of it. And we're, the entire planet is vulnerable to things being struck. You know, a 13-year-old boy survived a direct meteor strike. I'm just trying to compile the most minute instances to the most catastrophic so we can learn from all this well I that's, yeah I'm glad you are Thomas because I think what I see is a lot of people you know they hear New Madrid or any of these other catastrophic events and they think it's just a one thing that's going to do it you know and I don't believe that I think there are multiple factors I think you touched on it earlier some of it's natural some of it is not um, you know, and that is going to be a cocktail that nobody can fathom. The, not the ones perpetrating it, uh, because, you know, again, that's not in their control, although they think it is, you know. Um, I think we're, you know, people need to wake up to this and, again, not live in fear, but make some preparations. You know, if you have, I've been telling people a couple of years, you know, maybe you got an old great aunt that lives out in the hills in, in, in a farm away from the new Madrid zone. Get the hell out of there. You, you, it's destabilized now. Um, it's not going to take a lot to set it off, in my opinion. Time will tell. Well, okay. yeah, you know. Um, Okay, and you've got another link. I'll get that into the... Uh, now, what is this photo uh, so that people know? I'm going to be dropping the link in the chat room, and again, it will be below the uh, YouTube archive as well. All right, the photo I just sent over, I believe, is from uh, the Flickr account I've got. Yes. Just a second. I sent a link to my... It should have the Russian meteor detected by the infrasound sensors around the globe. There should be a link for that. And I took some pictures from Calipin's legacy, uh, which has the photos of the uh, earthquake, or the earthquake, the meteor impact zone, videos, and a plethora of links to um, read eyewitness testimony, where individuals saw the b flashes of light, the streaks of light in the sky, strange sulfur smells, and very wonderful, detailed, accurate analysis of what occurred and a lot of this information is disappearing and it's all linked on uh, Caleb Penn's legacy at this sh give me a second I'm having tech the computer is being a real pain I'll get this well they okay yeah the uh, that link that you sent for the uh, 
Kayla pins uh, didn't come through as a link, and I think I've lost a piece of it, so I can't. I'll, I'll resend it. The first link I sent was, let's see, here it is. I've got links in my hand and stuff <laughs> on the computer. It's about the only way I can read it is offhand. The first link I sent was a meteor caused the new Madrid earthquakes of 1811-1812. Right. I read this quick excerpt. Share recent findings suggesting a meteor impact was the initial mechanism to cause the new Madrid earthquakes of 1811-1812. There was a central semicircle depression in the northern Marshall County, Mississippi, where every hill in the valley reverberates out in a shockwave pattern. Study all the evidence at coolcreations.wix.com. I'll go ahead and send the link right now. Come on, computer. Whew. Just okay. a moment. Yes, and a thanks to Bim in the chat room for sharing uh, another flicker uh, of the uh, Russia media detected by infrasound sensors. So that's in the chat room, um, and I'll save that. That'll also be on the YouTube archive for anybody that wants it. Spectacular. Well, <laughs> Thank you, Biminia. Thank you, everybody. All right. Well, we'll we'll get to we'll get some links popping. I'm just this. I've never seen the computer act like this before. Well, this is common, uh, Thomas. You know, uh, it's been a couple of years in talk radio now, and when you are touching on sensitive issues, there are always all kinds of craziness going on. Um, you know, there really is, uh, and I guess we're just very thankful uh, that you know the trolls have stayed away, and the chat room is just nice, and it's a nice place to be here at UCY. Uh, they don't do the drama, you know, uh, and it's real nice. So uh, I want to thank everybody who was able to join us. Uh, we're winding down to about the six, seven minute mark, uh, just to give you a heads up, Thomas. Um, so, uh, geez, I had a question and I forgot where it was, so I'm just going to shut up and let you uh, use your minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm trying to find some notes I had from eyewitness testimony of these events falling. Even the, the natives, I hear I've got it right here. Uh, one historical account pertaining to the New Madrid earthquakes draws attention to Tecumseh's prophecy about stamping his feet on a, speci on a specified date, December 16th, 1811, to cause all houses in an Alabama, Alabama Indian vintage to fall down. This account, although not as detailed as Alan Eckert's story above, seems to bear it out. They knew it. thousands of natives died in this meteor impact, and it, it was a highly populated region with natives and locals. And that's one of the big misconceptions is that a lot, a lot of people think these meteors are falling in sparsely populated areas for the most part. and. I think that's what we need to be concerned with is something big falling on an area with a lot of people under it. So if we can get the technology available, learn how to look for these anomalies. I found a link a few days ago of radar, a next red radar dish catching uh, a meteor passing through. So we have the ability to look for this stuff and I found so many links and darn it if I can't. I, I will provide every link that I've got. There's hundreds of them, and there will be short descriptions and titles. So, and I'll have everything streamlined and laid out in a good order. So everything will be easily di di dissectable, digestible, and discerned, discussed, questioned, and shared. That's the whole idea. We're in the communication age. We're supposed to be. We're we need to be sharing real knowledge and truth and getting it you unanimously to all of the people instead of just talking about pop culture and all the junk that's out there it seems like if you're not talking about the garbage that's being spewed out of television and any other uh, monopolized medium you're censored you're censored like none other so let's just follow our hearts and our we know there's science backing this <sighs> just uh, give me just a second uh, here we go Thomas, yes. just just to let you know, I know you weren't able to get into the chat room, but uh, Jim is in the chat room. Resonated. Uh, it's an honor to have you here, Jim. Thanks for coming. Uh, hopefully next week, I'm going to put him on the spot right now. Hopefully next week, Jim, you'll be able to jump on here with us. Uh, would like to hear from you, um, and hopefully Thomas, you can. Uh, they'll leave your computer alone.
But, uh, and again, uh, folks, any links that Thomas uh, will probably, after the show, email me, and they will be in the YouTube video so that uh, you have access to all that information. Um, and I will also paste them into the chat room and leave them there for a day or two so that if you want to come back and pick them up from there, you'll be able to do that as well. Thank you, Jim Lee. Thank you so much, Resonated, for showing up, brother. I can't wait to do part two. Uh, I want to read quickly from a message I received. I think I, it's pertinent I read this. I wanted to include both Canada and the BP Gulf of, Gulf of Mexico. Does that, uh, I just wanted to include all sides of this. I don't have the exact details because BK Lim's dedicated his life and is on the run for his life because of the information he has. Uh, rest in peace, Matthew Simmons, for doing what's right and letting us know that this was by design. I need to get uh, in contact or at least consulted by Mr. BK uh, regarding my statements. Uh, something big is obviously looming in the ahead. We can all feel it. And yes, there are lots of false statements and many uh, there's many things out there that just lead up the, the wrong trail. There's false false flags that never come to be. Pure fear mongering, fear porn. This is the complete opposite. This has this is what we're trying to eradicate. We want to divide the flies from the burgers as they say, as we say. So I am looking this is all about avoiding poorly based statements. This is focusing completely on tendencies and trends, both socially and natural, from recorded events in history, from what the natives have detailed in many tribes, in many instances, and I would love to have read detailed accounts from both sides from what was going on in the region because people noted strange sulfurous smells, strange flashes of light, all the, and everything syncs up with this comet that passed the C-1811 F1, which, let's see here, got it right here, just, okay, the portion of the great, a portion of the path for the great comet of 1811-1812, based on NASA and JPL, uh, is shown on the image, I'll provide the link, you enter C-1811 F1 as the search object, comet positions are annotated for 04 November 4th, 1811, December 23rd, 1811, and 6th of February, 1812. And a note that Burchell's 04, November 1811, magnitude 3 comet is the tail of Aquila. It's approximately 35 degrees south-southeast from the ephemerous position, um, C1811 F1. And the date, December 28th, it's on the same date. So synchronistically, the events fold into place. We've got the we've got the documented evidence. Let's look at it. Let's send it to researchers. It's being investigated. It's being stifled and suppressed. It's time to make the world aware of what really happened, so we can write history as truth and move on and prepare for whatever's to come, because we are all in this together. We're one love, one world. We're and thank you again for having me. I'll, I'll be sure to be much much more prepared and have a backup computer in case this uh, happens again because uh, I, w I won't let them bring me down. Well, you know, They're not going to bring us down. No, I appreciate your time, Thomas. And I know, uh, you know doing what you do is sticking your neck out there and uh, it's an honor to have you on. And for everybody else, we're just winding down for today, but we will be back next week with part two. Um, and I think if I know uh, Jim resonated Lee, the, uh, he will do his best to attend. I'm putting him on the spot, I know, but he's such a great guy, uh, full of knowledge. Hopefully he'll be here with us, the other guest you mentioned. Um, and we'll get those links out there. That's all for today. There's the music, folks. Much love, many thanks. And again, if you're uh, seeing this on YouTube or hearing it in the archive, find it on YouTube. Hit the remix button. Share it on your Facebook. Tweet the hell out of it. And make sure you're back here Wednesday, 8 p.m.